Hi, I'm Todd DeBoer, and I'm excited to talk to you today about new software that we have available for our Renesis demonstration kit, the RDK RX62N. This software is developed by our Renesis Europe Platinum Partner, MPC Data. They did a great job on this. We're thrilled to have it up there, and as part of this, you can go up to their website and check out MPC Data. What I want to cover first is the connections associated with this particular demo. The top one is the USB connector that's being used for the J-Link interface, or our debug interface. The second connector is our Ethernet connector, which we use because we're actually serving HTML pages off of the RX microcontroller. And the third one is a USB function that we are using to actually do a HID human interface device emulation. And we'll show that off a little bit later on. So at this point, I'm going to open up Hue, the High Performance Embedded Workshop. And I'm not going to walk you through how to find the project. I think that you've probably got enough experience by now with other demos. So go ahead and open the HWS file, which is the Hue project file. And when it comes up, it's open in the default session. So what we're going to do is change the default session to J-Link. That's how you connect to the kit. It's going to automatically connect, download, reset the target, be completely ready to go. All you've got to do is hit Reset Go. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to minimize the display because at this point, we're kind of done with the development side. In fact, the only thing we used Hue for was to program the code inside of the board. The board's now running. So let's take a look at the board. The first thing we'll look at is on the display, it shows DHCP. This DHCP is showing that it's used the DHCP server to get an IP address, assign it to the platform. And we can see not only the IP address, but we can see the subnet mask, we can see the gateway. It's actually a great little LCD display that we've used on here and the information, fantastic for demos like this. Again, when we look back at the board, we notice the J-Link is connected. That's how we're debugging this particular kit. What I'm going to do now is switch to the website. So I bring up a browser. I will tell you, I seem to have some problem on Chrome. Not that I have a problem with Chrome, just I have a problem with this demo on Chrome. So if I go ahead and just plug in the IP address that's shown on the LCD display in Internet Explorer, let's take a look at what the window comes up like. As the window comes up, it's showing the front page. On the front page is a little bit of information for you, a little bit of information on the uh, product family itself. But the thing that I want to point out is this link right here for Real VNC. You probably want to download that now if you don't have a VNC type client and you want the client side. So go ahead and download VNC client, have it sitting there and ready to go. What I'm going to do is click on a few of the other web pages that are being hosted by our RDK. So I'm going to click on File Statistics, and I can see the individual files that are hosted up. I can see how many times I visited at this point. You know, I, the Files page is pretty well the only one. I can click on Network Statistics. I can see the TCP IP statistics that are going over the network. I can click on Network Connections. What's really cool is when I first ran this demo, I actually was running this part of it on my laptop, and a friend of mine was running the VNC client on his laptop, both of them being served up by the same RDK board. If I click on the Renesis RX62N link, I can see information specific about this particular microcontroller. And finally, the one that I'm excited to get to is the link for the demo control page. We're going to start with the LED controls. Very cool stuff. And I mean, I'm amazed by simple things. Flashing lights, you know, I'm not hard to please me at Christmas time. So the first one I'm going to do is the LED pattern one. Click on send. So that posts the message back to the server. As we can see, the LEDs are now blinking on the board doing a pattern. To show that we can do other ones, I'm going to click on LED pattern number two. Click send again to post the message, and we see there's a different LED pattern on the board. Very cool stuff. I know this is still very, very simple stuff. All we're showing here is the ability to host an HTML page from the RDK, and then on the web browser, where we're actually going and, and using this information, 
That's where we're turning around and doing the intelligence to post information back to the RDK. So I'm going to leave this particular demo, and I'll click down at the bottom under Back to Demo Program. And I'm going to move down a little bit, and I'm going to do the USB HID mouse emulation. The way that it starts off is, however the orientation of the board is initially, all of the LEDs will be on. So if it's tilted this way or this way, then that's done. And we do this using the analog device's three-axis accelerometer. If we see initially all these are on, I'm going to go ahead and tilt the board away, and we see that the LED is in a certain direction. That's the direction of the tilt. And as I rotate the board around, I can see that I can make that LED run around. What's also happening is on the screen, I'm moving the mouse around on the screen. The next demo that I want to show you is the dry stone performance. So this demo, what we do is we give you the source code. Actually, for all of these demos, you get the complete source code. Big cool thing. Now, with this, you can simply click the Run Dry Stone Benchmark. Everything's done for you. Brings you up to an HTML page, and you get the results. Every three seconds, it updates it. Cool beans. And it shows you great results. I mean, you're talking about a fairly low cost, super high performance, CISC core, 32 bits, and it's got a DSP on board, and you're getting this huge performance. By the way, I, I had to do all the marketing stuff to let them let me use the video machine. So, okay, enough on the marketing side. Let's get back to the rest of the cool demos. The next one that I want to show you is the FPU bouncing ball. And let's admit it, a bouncing ball, that's kind of cool stuff. So I'm simply going to click on this bouncing ball demo. And at that point, you get pretty worried because you're like, hey, nothing's going on. But if you read the small print on the page, you'll see where it says, hey, bring up the VNC client. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my VNC client. And now I've got to type in the server. And the server is just the IP address that's showing up on the kit. And now what I get is the bouncing ball demo. And what you see here is a green ball that's bouncing all over the place. It's just ding! And what that is, is it's a bouncing ball that the formulas are being done with the FPU. And the red ball, that's kind of like me at the end of the day. Really slow, moving. That's actually the same core, but it's using non-DSP functionality. So that formula is being done the normal way. Think about it, though. It's still a 1.65 DMIT per megahertz core, and that's the type of performance. So this demo really demonstrates the effectiveness of having an FPU on board. What can you do? How much math, computational stuff can you do? Very cool demo. So I'm going to leave that one, and I'm going to go back to the demo control panel. The next demo that I'm going to do is the Mandelbrot demo. So if you don't know this one, I have the analogy of the, the side of a seashore. And as you examine closer and closer into that, it constantly looks like, well, more of that seashore, even though you zoom in and zoom in. And what we see is this, this kind of a pattern. And what you do is you bring your cursor over anywhere you want to examine, and you click. And it expands into that area of the picture. And as we go into it and keep clicking, we will continue to go further and further inside of this Mandelbrot. And Mandelbrot, by the way, is a formula. It's a fairly heavy-duty computational formula. And to do the video that's associated with this takes quite a bit of horsepower. And that's what we're really trying to show you is, again, the horsepower of this floating point unit and what we're capable of doing. Now, what I personally like is the fact that I can have video running on my PC being driven by my server. Ain't that cool stuff. So, personally, it's not just the fact that we do the Mandelbrot. It's the fact that, well, we also serve the whole thing and the video off of the RDK. At this point, I'm going to go back to my demo control center. I'm done with that demo. The final demo that I want to show you is the Pong game. And this one actually, in my feeling, it's incomplete and we need your help. Why don't you guys figure out how to be engineers and that's probably a little insulting. Sorry, don't mean to insult. So, but show us this great imagination and capability that you have. So the Pong game runs. You guys could improve this so much. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Run Game and jump back over to my VNC client. What I see is Pong. 
basically Pong from years ago. And what I'm going to do is one of my buttons is going to move the, the one side of the paddles up and down, and the other, the other button moves it the other way. So I press switch three, and I get them to move. And I switch one, and I get them to go back. I miss it! Okay, so what I think we could do is we could use the exact same technology, except, oh, 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 I missed another one. Except we could use two boards. And one board could be using the three-axis accelerometer, and we could tilt the board, and that would control one of the paddles, and then a different board could be tilting and controlling the other panel. Just an idea. I think that would be really cool. Or you could just use one board and use the accelerometer to control the paddle. So, bottom line is, it's a pretty cool demo. You know, going back, I don't know, we're using a pretty advanced micro to do something that we did, what, 20, 30 years ago? But, you know me, I'm an engineer. I kind of like to be able to do these kind of things. I'm going to return to the demo control panel. And at this point, I've shown you the demos that are included in it. We didn't have to do anything inside of Hue as far as build. And by the way, I probably wouldn't build this library. Because if you build it uh, and your, your license has expired as far as um, Renesis, uh, you won't be able to link this. There's a 128K code limit associated with these files. And this particular demo happens to exceed 128K. So if you do exceed it, just go ahead and bring it back from your original zip file. And you can load it up, you can take a look at it, you can examine and use the code. It's just that when you go to build it, if you've exceeded your, your time limit of 60 days, then it won't be able to link. It will build, just won't link. With that, I've really had a good time showing you our demo. This is the YRDK RX 62N demonstration platform. And you can get this kit, go up to our website, Go to renesis.com slash RDK RX 62N. Hope you have a great day. Thanks.